What's going on, Pro Guides family? It's your host, Sergeant Frost, and today is the Faded Episode 3 patch day. And boy, have Riot Games delivered big time. We've got some balancing changes to every single agent, huge weapon updates that no doubt will change how we play the game, massive competitive updates for ranked, performance updates, and so much more. You guys won't want to miss this, so stay tuned. Straight from the top, we have agent updates to every single agent specifically, but also some big changes to agents as a whole. First off, for all agents, signature abilities not only provide a minimum of one charge per round instead of accumulating a charge every round. This means that if you have a two charge signature ability like Omen and you end the round with one charge, you will not get an extra charge. Also, charges gained from cooldowns are always temporary instead of agent specific. So if you ever use anything in a round, expect it to be gone by the next round regardless of situation. Meanwhile, one of the biggest changes to all agents comes in the form of how flashes function. With this new update, visibility on the latter end of the flash will return faster than before, meaning that if you get flashed, you will regain vision at a faster rate instead of being full blind until the duration ends. This is a nerf to flashes, which seems to be in line with the clear direction that the Valorant balance devs are steering us in, which is to tone down the abundance of utility in the game. If you don't believe me, you'll see once we cover the specific agent changes. Some of you may have seen the leaks on the agent changes earlier this week, and they were true, but didn't include all the changes that will be introduced. Before we get into specific agent changes, this patch has some massive changes and if you're not prepared, you could totally feel out of depth. If you guys want to get caught up or get a head start on episode 3, come visit our website ProGuides.com where our mortal and radiant level coaches are more than happy to help you give insight on the biggest changes to watch out for and how to assimilate into this new meta. If this interests you, be sure to check us out. Astra's Nova Pulse and Gravity Will, also known as her Stun and Suck, will be nerfed to have their cooldowns increase from 12 seconds to 25 each. This is a huge nerf which will make her much harder to use effectively as you will have a lot bigger gaps in your defense when using any of these abilities. Additionally, her Astral Form Star system will be going through some changes as well. Firstly, her stars are now inactive when placed during the buy phase and only activate 1.4 seconds into the round start. This means you can't do anything immediately spawn related, but it is not preventing early plays from happening either. On the attacker side, Astral will be able to see the spike's location in Astral Form, which can help with management of stars and awareness. However, the spike is not going to have more information other than the location, so the status of the spike is left largely unknown. Her star's recall cooldowns will be increased from 8 seconds to 15 seconds, which means you can't use her stars again after a recall as quickly. This slows down her mind games considerably, and she can't use the fake smoke trick of recalling her stars as often. The biggest change here is that her signature charges will be reduced from 2 to 1, so every round Astra will only have one star to begin with. However, her star cost has been decreased from 200 to 150 credits, which means a full kit of Astra stars will cost the same. Her stars from 2 to 4 will cost more than they did before, with 2 stars costing 150 total, 3 stars costing 300, and 4 stars costing 450 respectively. Before this change, it would be free for 2 stars, 200 for 3 stars, and 400 for 4 stars. Breach is going through a ton of balancing changes this patch. They are in line with how the Valorant devs have wanted to change up the function of the initiators in Valorant, especially when Sova was taking over too often as the main initiator in the meta. Breach's Flashpoint ability will have its total charges reduced from 3 to 2, and they have its cost increased from 200 to 250. Also, his projectile speed will be decreased from 2500 to 2000, which means the Flash's travel time will be 20% slower. How that will affect our Flashes is not really well tested, but it is still a nerf to Breach's Flashes. Meanwhile, Breach's Fault Line is being buffed greatly, with the full charge time being decreased from 1.5 seconds to 1 second, making it viable to pull out quickly. Additionally, the width of the Fault Line is also increased by 25%, from 600 units to 750 units. Breach's Fault Line has a telegraph set of cracks on the floor before exploding usually, and that is being reduced from 1.3 seconds to 1 second. Meanwhile, the concussion duration is increased from 3 seconds to 3.5 seconds. His unequipped time after firing is also being decreased from 1 second to 0.7 seconds, which means that it will feel less clunky to use. Finally, the cooldown of this ability will be increased from 35 seconds to 40 seconds. Overall, his fault line has received some massive buffs overall and will definitely be a much more powerful ability than before. On a similar note, Breach's Aftershock ability was also buffed and slightly reworked as well. Instead of a big explosion in the pass after the activation time, the Aftershock will now explode 3 times each with each blast dealing 60 damage without any fall off, like the old Aftershock did. The shocks will now be 6 seconds apart. Also, the explosion radius will be increased from 260 units to 300 units wide. His unequip time will be decreased to 0.9 seconds from 1.1 seconds, and the cost will be increased to 200 credits. Finally, Breach's ultimate will receive a buff, increasing the width of all the explosions to 2300, which was the width of the final explosion. So instead of a similar explosion branching into wider explosions, you will have a straight line with big explosions all the way. This thing is massive, and if you thought the old ultimate could cover bomb sites, this one will cover everything in front of it too. Brimstone isn't getting much love this patch, despite not being very favored in the meta so far. 
His incendiary will have its cost increase from 200 to 250 credits, and that's pretty much it. However, with how some agents are receiving big nerfs, I suppose this is good in the sense that Brimstone isn't receiving massive nerfs or anything. That logic definitely applies to Cypher, who has slowly fallen out of the meta as an agent that has struggled to deal with the prevalence of Jet and also been overshadowed by the likes of Sage and Killjoy in many cases. This time, Cypher's Neural Theft Ultimate will have its ultimate cost reduced from 7 points to 6, which will help Cypher find more value in-game. Additionally, he hasn't received any other changes, so that means with all things considered, we can kind of say that Cypher is indirectly getting buffed. You'll also see another important factor that gives us this idea when you see the next agent changes to Jet. Jet is receiving some nerfs, as her updraft will now cost 150 credits from its original 100. Her Tailwind, which is her dash, will no longer break Cypher's tripwire, which was one huge factor in making Cypher's life as a defender very painful. This could have some big implications, but it's still a much needed win for Cypher mains out there. Jet's Cloudburst Smokes will now have their cost increase from 100 to 200, and her Bladestorm will now cost 7 ult points instead of the former 6 ult points. Now, if you are following the leaks that have been coming out regarding the agent changes that were shown in the past few days, many people jumped to the assumption that Killjoy would not be receiving any changes. However, this is not the case, and Killjoy is receiving some nerfs to her kit as well. Her alarm bot's cooldown after being picked up will be increased to 20 seconds from 7, and her turret will follow the same pattern and be increased to 20 seconds from its original 10 seconds. This will make it much harder for her to reposition her utility immediately after picking it up, but it should not affect her if she's just trying to clean up shop and rotate to another bomb site. Omen is receiving some buffs and nerfs this patch, which makes it kind of hard to judge whether this agent won overall now. Omen's Paranoia, which is his flash, is the only flash in the game that actually received a buff, reducing its price from 400 credits to 300. His Dark Cover Smokes have had its signature charges reduced to 1 from its original 2, and the second smoke must be bought for 100 credits. Meanwhile, the cooldown of the smoke recharge is increased from 35 seconds to 40, which means he will have less changes to use his smoke throughout a round. Finally, his Shrouded Steps cost has been increased to 150 from 100. Overall, it seems much more like a nerf, and considering how he's currently not the most favored in the meta, this could be a death sentence for him. However, it will be hard to say, since Astra is also getting the nerf hammer this patch as well. Maybe Omen or Brimstone will fill in to replace the missing controller spot next to Viper. Phoenix is not receiving any changes except for the Universal Flash nerf, which is to increase his curveball cost from 200 to 250. However, it has to be noted that with KO being released, it seems like KO will outclass and potentially take over Phoenix's role as a duelist with how strong KO's kit seems to be. Additionally, his kit doesn't seem to mesh well with KO, as suppression mechanics make movement abilities seem much stronger than before. We'll have to see, but Phoenix definitely seems to be in a bad spot despite having no nerfs. Raze is getting a model update, which might make her more visible or polished. However, this is just a side change, she is receiving a big nerf. Raze's Boombot will be increasing in its price from 200 to 400, which is a big hit to the Boombot's economic viability. One of her best abilities for information gathering is her Boombot, so nerfing it by making the price double is definitely a huge hit to her kit. This hurts her a lot because in-game she will easily have to pay an extra 2,000 to 4,000 credits, depending on whether she wants her Boombot often. Additionally, Raze's Showstopper is going to receive a nerf that makes her ult cost increase from 7 to 8 points. This is also pretty bad for her, as her ultimate was already nerfed to 7 points from 6 earlier in Valorant's life cycle. Overall, this is a bad day for Raze mains. Reyna has a flash, therefore she has to get the same treatment. Her flash will now cost 50 credits more, up to 250. However, with how it seems like Valorant devs are trying to tone down on the utility abundance in Valorant, this could be a big buff to Reyna's power. She will now be able to take more open duels without having to rely as much on having utility, as one of her primary weaknesses is that she has little utility to have upfront value, and her abilities revolve around her getting kills. This might make her a very strong agent since she's not receiving any other nerfs, but the game's meta might change to a more gunplay-oriented meta. Sage is receiving some hefty nerfs as well with the utility price, as her slow orb will now cost 200 credits instead of 100, and her barrier orb will be increased to 400 from 300. Meanwhile, her resurrection cost will be increased to 8 points from 7, following Raze's footsteps. This is a big hit to Sage as well, but considering how her utility is a lot more situational, this doesn't seem to be nearly as bad as it is for Raze, but the nerf to resurrection could be a big hit to her viability throughout a game, since this could mean one less resurrection a game or more. Sky is the other initiator Riot has been trying to rework slightly to bring into the meta. Her Trailblazer, which is her Tiger, will have its vision radius increased by around 30%, from 1750 units to 2250 units. The max concussion duration will be increased from 3 seconds to 4, and the cost will be increased by 50 credits to 250 credits. Her flash will follow the same trend as others, but with a twist. While her charges are reduced to 2 from 3 original charges, she will actually recharge a flash every 40 seconds, which means she can effectively have 4 flashes in a round. She no longer needs to re-equip to trigger her flash, and her bird's projectile will now be able to get around corners and also respond more to guiding. Also, the audio attenuation when cast will be reduced to 1250, meaning it is harder to hear the bird coming around the corner in hectic situations or in further spots. Finally, her flashes are getting a big price increase from 100 credits to 250. However, considering everything else, it seems like Sky will be the Flashmaster from here on out, 
With all the buffs to her flash, everyone better put on some sunglasses. Sova has been the premier initiator for much of Valorant's lifespan, and it looks like the devs are looking to tone him down a bit. This comes in the form of a price increase to his whole kit. His shot guards will increase in price from 100 to 150, his owl drone will have its price increase from 300 to 400, and his ultimate point cost is up from 7 points to 8. Also his recon bolt will look to have its cooldown time increase from 35 seconds to 40. Overall, it seems like Sova's hit a little hard with these nerfs, but he will still be the same old Sova that we always know from our games. It will have to be seen whether these price changes will hurt him as much. Viper is next up with the nerfs to make her snakebite ability specifically, which many of us can probably agree has been a huge contributor to the infamous post-plant meta. Most people only know that her price is being increased from 100 to 200, but it looks like that's not the extent of the nerfs. Her poison duration will be reduced from 8 seconds to 6.5 seconds. The silver lining is that the snake bite will function better, and the outside edges of the acid will perform faster and do damage to people sitting inside of it more consistently. And finally, we have our boy Yoru, who we have come to realize is down bad in terms of viability in the meta. However, that doesn't stop Riot from hitting him with the universal flash nerfs. So his flashes will now cost 250 from its original price of 200 credits. And if you thought that was it, he's actually getting nerfed harder than Phoenix and Reyna. Not only is his flash becoming more expensive, his gate crash cooldown has been increased from 35 seconds to 40. Poor Yoru, I really hope he gets a rework soon. Now that we've covered aging changes, we also have some massive weapon updates coming in to shake up the weapon meta. Most people are familiar with the econ changes that were leaked earlier, but as we got nearer to the episode 3 release date, we also came to find out more on the plans to nerf running and gunning, walking accuracy, and more. Well, now it's here, so let's jump right in. First off, tagging will receive a slight nerf from a 75% slow to a 72.5% slow. This means that if you are hit, you won't slow down as much as before, which could change how gunfights feel. Meanwhile, the weapon dead zones of all the weapons will be reduced from 30% to 27.5, which means that 27.5% speed and under, you're accurate, which means that you have to be moving relatively slower to shoot accurately. All rifles will be receiving a walking and accuracy nerf from 1.3 to 2.0. Although the exact numbers aren't very easy to understand, just know that you won't be nearly as accurate when walking and shooting now. All heavies will receive a bigger nerf, going from 0.5 to 2.5 walking and accuracy. This seems substantial enough to almost rule out the ability for you to walk and shoot now. All SMGs will have a walking in accuracy nerf from 0.3 to 1.0, and also a running accuracy nerf from 2.0 to 2.5. I know that the Valorant devs have stated that they don't want to hurt the SMGs too hard in the walking running accuracy department, as it's still a core part of their gameplay design. However, it seems like they're getting some substantial nerfs, so maybe the mid-range spraying will be very inconsistent now. Now on to more specific guns. The Classic will be receiving a walking in accuracy change from 0.25 to 0.84, and a running in accuracy change from 1.5 to 2.1. The Frenzy will receive a price decrease from 500 to 450, and will receive a walking inaccuracy nerf from 0.25 to 0.8, and a running inaccuracy nerf from 1.0 to 2.0. The Ghost will receive a walking inaccuracy nerf from 0.25 to 0.92, and a running inaccuracy nerf from 1.85 to 2.3. It seems like the Ghost is meant to be a more precise gun that wants to punish movement. The Sheriff will receive a substantial walking inaccuracy nerf from 0.25 to 1.2, and the running accuracy will be nerfed from 2.0 to 3.0 as well. They really want the Sheriff to be a high skill gun. All these nerfs seem to make sense, since in one of the talks with the devs, it was confirmed that they want to tone down the pistol accuracy while running and walking to make pistol rounds require more precise gunplay. Meanwhile, the Judge is getting some big nerfs to price and damage. With its price being increased from 1600 to 1850, the biggest nerf in the price out of all of the guns, and also its long range damage is being nerfed as well, where at 10 meters the damage per pellet is reduced from 13 to 10, and from 15 meters the damage per pellet is reduced from 10 to 7. This should definitely affect how consistently you can get kills from mid to long range, and is justified with how strong the Judge is at mid range situations still. The Bulldog will have its fire rate increased from 9.15 rounds per second to 9.5 rounds per second, still slightly slower than the Vandal's 9.75. However, this is still a buff, and the price is also being decreased from 2100 credits to 2050, which seems like something that's just to get the attention on the Bulldog more. The Shorty will have its price decreased from 200 to 150, the Stinger will have its price decreased from 1100 to 950, which is a pretty good amount, the price of the Bucky will be decreased from 900 to 850, the price of the Marshall will be decreased from 1000 to 950, and the price of the Eras will be decreased from 1600 to 1550. The biggest price buff will go to the Operator, with its price being decreased from 5000 to 4700. With how the game is being updated, this might be the time for the Operator to resurface as a meta gun. Next up, we have the competitive changes coming in to fix our currently flawed rank system. So one thing that the system used to do was make MMR changes harder to make after the account has been around for longer, which causes people to become hard stuck due to their MMR not being as changeable as before, meaning that ranking up will make them lose a lot more rank rating with each loss than win. They are removing that system for the time being, so our rank will better represent our MMR as it seems. Additionally, they will be increasing matchmaking accuracy, which means we will be playing against people at our skill levels more often, instead of occasionally big skill mismatches. However, I think this might make queue times longer, but I'm all for it. 
Individual performances will be factored in Immortal Plus to improve matchmaking. The rank rating curves will be adjusted, so that means our wins and losses won't have as big of an effect on rank rating swings. That also means that it requires more games to rank up, but also more games to derank as well. Finally, placements will be raised to D1 from Platinum 3, which is targeted to help reduce the grind for players at the top, and also maybe make matchmaking not as bad at the start of the season for high Platinum and mid-Diamond players. As we all know, KO is now being released as an agent, and he seems to be the perfect counter to the post-plant meta and the overabundance of utility in the game. He seems to be a big counter to Sentinels, and also has some big uses with his ability against other agents as well. Let's give a quick rundown of his abilities. His E will be his suppression ability, Zero Point, which will be a blade that you throw at a target area, where it will explode and suppress agents in a radius around it. The suppression lasts for 8 seconds and the ability has one charge each round. His Q will be his flash ability, Flash Drive, which is like a flashbang from traditional FPS games. If he left clicks it, it will be thrown like a nade with a 1.6 second cooking time before it explodes. And if you right click it, you will underhand throw it and it will only take 1 second to explode. He has 2 charges of this ability. His C ability is Fragment. This will throw a grenade that pulses and does damage for 4 ticks, and it kind of functions more like a molotov than a grenade. KL will only have 1 charge of this ability. Finally, his ultimate supercharges him and gives him a weapon buff like a stim beacon, and also causes him to pulse out and suppress players for 4 seconds if they are hit. He pulses 4 times as long as he is still alive and not down. Speaking of downed, if he is killed during his ultimate, he goes into a downed state, where he can be picked up by a teammate. He is stuck in the position he's at, while also having a health pool that can be depleted if his enemies fire at him. Onto the side of performance updates, it seems like Riot has found a way to optimize the game system a bit more, which should result in an overall 6% increase in performance improvements for medium to high spec machines. Riot has added hover cards to the social panel, so you can hover over your friends to see some information such as account level, Riot ID, friend notes, titles, and other things. You can also now invite people to a party with their Riot ID in custom games. Next up, we have some changes to the kill feed, which will see your kills be highlighted in a border to stand out more. Assists will also be shown on the left hand of the kill feed, and kills that assist you will also have a highlighted border. The kill feed will also display ultimate abilities when an agent is killed with second life abilities. And finally, there will be multicolor kill feeds in cases where kills will result in the same team color appearing side by side. Also, there will be an ability to toggle on and off the outer crosshair lines, as well as adjusting timings for utility based assists to make them consistent across different agent abilities. This one is more specific, but it's a round rollback feature that lets you replay a previous round in the case of needing to match Medic. This one is more for tournaments, but seems to be a nifty feature to make things easier for organizers. In regards to Year 1, the current events in progress will be the Year 1 Event Pass, which is the free battle pass that will be lasting from Patch 3.0 until Patch 3.01. This includes many goodies and also 20 Radiantite. Squad Boost is also in action, which will give you XP boost for queuing as a pre-made group. This will be for all of Patch 3.0. Finally, account levels will be added permanently, sort of how like Overwatch or League does it. You will have a numerical level based on how much you play, and you will be boosted to the respective level depending on how much you have played before patch 3.0. On the side of bugs, there are a lot of bug fixes that we won't cover, as they are very specific and somewhat niche. However, some of these seem to have been pretty much game breaking, like some glitched cypher cams and weird interactions with Sage's wall with resurrections, and other changes regarding cypher as well. If you're interested in knowing more about exact bug fixes, I suggest you guys check out the patch notes on their website. Well guys, that's a whole lot to go through in one video. This patch entering episode 3 was absolutely massive, and I can't wait to get started trying out all the new things the game has to offer and have changed, and I hope you are too. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest Valorant news, updates, and guides. And make sure to check out our website for truly amazing on-demand coaching. This has been your host Sergeant Frost, and good luck on the grind this episode.